from Fabricated Quilts and coming live from the kitchen. So today we wanted to share a few different products and we wanted to share some different views. And it's really hard to do that single setup when we're up in the sewing room because the passageways are really narrow. So I just wanted to give us a little bit more room to work. And I wanted to share my fun and fancy sampler quilt. So that's the quilt that we have right here on the wall. And the concept of it is I was building a quilt for the book, but the quilt was really, really big. And I felt like that might be a little bit intimidating. I wanted to make something more accessible that students could work with me and use the designs in the book. And so I created something that's a little bit smaller. It's a generous sized lap quilt. And you can see it here on the wall. And this is also designed to use a lot of great tools from Sew so Steady that we're going to demo today so you can get a chance to see how they work. So there's eight sampler blocks. And actually this particular block is my favorite. So if you have the circles on quilts tool, the uh, quilting template, that's what I use to build this block. And so there's quite an innovative use of that tool to build this block. And I have videos for each block here in the quilt. And there's also then a video for setting the uh, blocks on point. And then also you'll be able to see right here how to put the miter on. So all of those videos are available to you on the Sew Steady University course. And the, there's uh, quite a few hours that are available that are already posted. That video course isn't live yet because we are just releasing the product. So let me show you the pattern really quickly. So this is the book itself. It's about 32 pages. And I've tried to be really comprehensive. So I'll just, I'll show you the first page, right? So you can see each unit, all the things that are required, and then each unit that you need to build a block is gonna be included in there. So then you'll get a full color picture of the block itself and you'll have step-by-step -step instructions that'll walk you through how to build it. I also include pressing instructions, seam guide information, uh, just anything to kind of help you if there's tips on put this together first or put that together first. And then of course on the video, we're walking through that together and you're actually getting a full demonstration of exactly how to pin, how to ease, how to put these pieces together so that your blocks will be really, really accurate when you're done. And I have to say, I was so impressed with the Westerly locking ruler system because my blocks were super accurate and they fit together so nicely. I was so impressed. So this is the quilt. We just wanted to give you a full view of it and it's eight blocks. Now the blocks that are on this quilt are actually in our design ruler book. So not how to make them, but how to quilt them. The quilting pattern is in this book. And so what my concept was is as we go forward and people build the quilt, if they want to participate in that, you don't have to do the video. You can just buy the pattern and you can make the quilt yourself. And you can use other tools to make it. You don't have to have the Westerly tools. But I'm going to show you today, they are fantastic. And they're super convenient and easy to make all kinds of different size half square and quarter square triangles. So this book is basically designed around those tools. And so then one of the concepts is that as we go forward, when we have enough people who have made the quilt, then we're gonna have a quilt along so we can all quilt it together. So in order to participate in the quilt along, you would have to have purchased the pattern and you would have to have the fun and fancy quilting design book because those are the proprietary uh, content that are making the quilt and quilting it. So, so those are our two products for today. So let me show those real quick, a little product placement. And of course, we absolutely have to have our fun and fancy templates because that is the majority of what the quilt is quilted with. So about 95%. And then we do share some different options if you wanted some different choices. You can always make the quilt bigger too. If you had more ideas and you wanted to add some more blocks, you can use the basic content in the book and add some more pieces to have a larger quilt. So as I told you, we're tap dancing a little bit. We're gonna shift over and I'm gonna share 
the tools right here on the table and show you some of our amazing Westerly cutting products. All right, as you know, I have my super awesome production manager helping me. So I put together a little sample so that we actually had something to make. This is not a block that is in our fun and fancy collection. This is a new pattern that I've created and it's called the 4th of July swoon block. So I'll just move that so you can see it. So this block, I love it. I created it for a class that I did and I just think it is fantastic. And it's a terrific way to illustrate the Westerly tools. So let me share really quickly the couple of things that we're gonna try to go over and show you. And then we're actually gonna piece this block together because it has a little tricky piecing. So I thought that would be a fun way to uh, give you some cool content for today. So this right here is, of course, half square, but these are quarter, right? So this is a half square piece. And then of course, both of these are half square triangle units. And then this is quarter square right here. So this whole quilt right here finishes at, at 12 and a half. And what that means is that each one of these units, one, two, three, four, five, it's a five by five patch, okay? And so mathematically, we could make it any size, but this finishes out at two and a half, finishes at two and a half, this part, that makes this finishing at five right here because two and a half and two and a half is five and that's also two and a half. So the square here, three inch cut, this will be a two and a half inch finished half square cut. These are gonna be five inch finished quarter square units and then this piece will be a five inch finished half square unit. The reason that I, I wanna show you some of these is I know that Mindy Tippett is doing a really cool quilt along with a lot of the Westerly items. So somebody asked about the product, about why would you be cutting bias strips for using with this product? So let me just show you really quick. I've got a, another sample of the block that's not stitched up yet. So this one's pretty big. This one is actually a 15 inch block, so quite a bit larger. And I wanna just talk about when you cut a triangle, what you get. So if this is the half square triangle unit, typically you're gonna sew that to another triangle right here, right? So this is the triangle and this is a triangle. So if I, if I have this, this is where the bias should be for this one. Because then as soon as I sew it to its partner, now that bias is controlled. When you cut a triangle, no matter what, you are going to have bias on some side, especially on a 45 degree triangle, which all of these are, right? And then this is the quarter square right here. And because we're gonna sew four of those, then we would have the bias to be on this short side and on this short side. So when I cut this one, the straight of the grain is right along the bottom right here. Right here on this one, on the bottom is the straight of grain. So when we do the half square, we need our strip to be biased on that flat side. And I'm gonna show you that right now. So, this tool right here, this is the Westerly Adjustable Locking Cutting Template, Cutting Ruler. It's a strip cutter. And I have added these fabulous thumb screws, which are so great because now I don't have to, you know, use a little screwdriver to manipulate them. I can just loosen them up. So I'm going to show you how I figured out what size strip that I needed to have in order to cut my half square. So this right here is the half square triangle tool. And you can see right there, it says bias. So the bottom part of this triangle is gonna be bias. And we wanna cut a strip on the bias in order to have that ready so we can cut. So in order to find out the size, I can literally put this black bar right there. So let me show you. 
I already set it up at the five inch size. I don't have to do I don't have to figure out anything. I just look at that and I say, okay, my finished size of my square is going to be five. So this is going to factor in that five and a half inch seam allowance without me doing anything. So then if I put it under here and I line this edge right up like that, and then you can see right here, the very tip of the triangle is already lined up all the way along. So this is the width of strip that I need to cut. Okay, so let's get our fabric prepared. And we kind of have a little bit of a narrow space as far as the camera. We don't have a large window. But let me just open it so you can see. This is just basically a square. And because I want to shorten the cut a little bit, I'm gonna line up these two edges right here. Make sure they're nice and smooth and they're evenly together. And I'm going to open this seam right here on the bottom. I'm gonna open this with my strip cutter. So I have to flip it around. Sorry guys, I'm right-handed. Alrighty, so here we go. So right here at the top, I've got a straight edge right there. So I'm gonna use that fold and I'll line that straight line right up along that fold. And this way I can cut this and open up that piece of fabric and give me that bias edge. So with this template, you wanna push down close to the edge here. It has a little rock because of the screw and the bar. So make sure that you put your fingers kind of close to the edge and hold down securely. And then cut up to your fingers and then you can move your hand and cut the rest. Okay, so now, this now is the bias edge right here. So I'm gonna flip it so I can butt my bar right up against it. This black bar now is gonna sit right up against that clean cut that I just made. I can even double check right here and make sure that I'm square because right here, this should be perfectly on the fold, and that will make sure that we have this edge square to our strip. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and I'll cut that. And that's our strip right there. So I've already set up this ruler to the correct size, and if I wanted to cut a bunch of them, I can literally just put it right there. I can just set that right on there. Let's flip it over. All right, and I wanna cut off a little bit of that edge right there. So there's my black bar right there, and I can see the lines as well. Here, I'll do it so you can see a little better. Can you see that all right? And notice that the tip right there of this is right at the top of the strip. And the reason why that's important is that's gonna let me cut more than one because the strip is exactly the right size I can go ahead and I set my cutter in place, right? And now this edge is ready. So I could literally cut another one. Now I don't need to flip it around, but because I have the fold, I wouldn't be able to get a good cut. So let me show you, we'll do two of them so you can see how you can move throughout the cut. All right, so here's our first one. Just hold everybody in place. Right, let me get that little tag off. All right, so you can see, look how pretty those are. Right, and then here, I can have this, as long as I have enough space to put that next triangle on, I'm just gonna line it up right here at the very tip of the triangle. Hold everybody in place. So I'll take that extra off in here. And now we have two perfect cuts just like that. So what's so great about being able to use this tool is any moment that I need a different size, all I have to do is unscrew these. And one of the things that's really great about them is, you know, it, it is three pieces, but for three pieces, I get any size that I want, and I get tremendous accuracy 
which is really, really great. So, so if Susan has a question, uh, she doesn't understand why you have to cut a bias strip. Why not cut squares and then cut diagonal? So, um, so Susan, you're cutting the bias when you cut that square. What I'm allowing you to do with this method is strip cut, which is a more cost-effective use of a, of a strip. You get to use basically the entire strip. And so that's why I really like it, because instead of being able to cut a square out of something, like, you know, okay, I have to cut a square out of a bigger piece, and then I have a chunk out, well, instead of doing that, I can cut uh, edge to edge, salvage to salvage, and I can cut that strip into as many units as I can. And I just, I really like that. I think it's really effective. And let me show you something else. So let's say we cut our bias, right? And this is the the piece that we have left from what we cut. So let me just open that up. Okay, that's the bias right there, this, this part on the bottom. But there's nothing that prevents me from saying, okay, now I can strip cut this and use this as well. You know, I would square up the edge here, I would clean this up, but now I can just subcut this into strips that are not biased. So this is not wasted, this is completely useful. And we can just keep going. And then if I need more bias, I can just cut another strip or whatever. So it is really effective. And I usually do cut a square and fold it and get that bias. But the reason that I like that is I can just put this right along that. And then I have the exact size that I need, the exact height that I need, so that that strip has very little waste. You can see that this is just the cleanup edge and this was the edge on the end. So it's really, really smart and practical to be able to use that. So let's go ahead, we'll do one more demo real quick. So that was um, cutting half square triangles. And the way that Leone West designed it, it's super smart. You're using that bias strip, which is a really effective way to use your yardage, and you get really, really precise cuts with hardly any waste. So with the quarter square, let me pull that up. So I've got mine set here for five. And that's because we're for the piece that we need, we need the five inch, but we need quarter squares. So that's this unit right here that we're gonna use. Okay, and we need blue and we need white. So let's go ahead and we'll get that together. So this is a straight of grain piece already right here. And if I wanted to strip this, I would, but I'll just be lazy. So here, that's that straight of grain right there. And let's, let's do one more thing. We're gonna set it up right sides together. Oh, I guess we will strip it. It'll be so much easier if we do that. Okay, so here, we'll show you how we adjust. So the previous one was already set up for the five inch half square. So in order to figure out the size, this one's already set. It's set for the five inch quarter square. So we'll put it underneath. And I like to do it um, two sides, like not in the middle, cause it's like a seesaw if you do it in the middle. So just loosen it up, get it touching here, put it on this side and then same thing. Loosen that and bring it up. Make sure it's touching right there. So it's butted right up against it here and then tighten it up. And then here I like to check because I can tell this doesn't fit yet. So always go back to that other side and just double check. So when you do the first one, because you got that tip, I think it doesn't uh, seat as properly. And then when you get the second side done and you come back, you'll get a nice clean cut. Okay. so. Because I'm a righty, let's go ahead and we'll get this fabric lined up nice. And then we'll stick this guy on here. All right, did I do it the right way? I'm gonna just double check. I wasn't sure if I did it backwards. Oh, perfect. Okay, good. 
Let's see, where's my cutter? Okay, so here's another thing that you can be aware of. I'll, I'll scoot this up just a little to make sure this is in your view. Right here, there is obviously a straight line. And if I wanna make sure that my cut is square to this fold, so that you know it's not gonna have that weird wavy line in the middle, I can use that line right there. And then everybody's butted up on this black bar. Press down. What's nice about this black bar is he kind of holds things in place. He kind of holds the fabric in place and things don't move around. So that's another feature that I really like about that. So we'll take these out of here. And now that we've cut our strip, I really just need one white and one blue because I already cut some for today. So I just want to show you how we do it. So now we've got this set and we put this black bar right on there. Make sure you have enough room on this side to get the full cut. And then set your ruler. I wanna set the cutter in front of where the fabric begins, right? Not just right there, but out in front. Same thing here, kind of set it against the template and then cut. So there's my two perfect triangles, quarter square triangles ready to be sewn. And because I match them up with this directionality like this with the right sides together, then this one is already ready to sew. So at this point, I wouldn't even try to mess with them. I would cut them that way and then just gently set them aside or carry this whole thing over to the sewing machine. And then these are already perfectly matched. So when I pick them up to sew, I would just, you know, kind of carefully lift them up and get them over there. So I have one more thing to share with you as far as fabric cutting, real quick. Let's see if I can find that blue piece right there. Okay, so this, can I have the square baby? Thanks. So we talked about how when we're gonna be cutting squares for this unit, they're a three inch square, and that includes the seam allowance already. So as far as this including seam allowance, this doesn't, it's just direct, and so is the strip cutter. If it says three and a half, it cuts three and a half. If it says four, it cuts four and a half. So mine is adjusted right now to be exactly at three, and I've already pre-cut my strip, so I can go ahead and just line this guy up, butt the black bar right up, hold in place, and there is my perfect square ready to go. And I've stacked up quite a few layers, and in fact, I think it even works better if you stack the layers up because they kind of fill this void, and then the ruler actually lays flatter. So I've cut up to six layers with this. Obviously, if you do that, you need a good blade, a new rotary blade, don't use a dull blade, and just make sure that you're being safe and everything else. But such a great product. Now, this is the four inch mini. This is such a cute little guy. But the, the product that we're gonna be sharing that's gonna come with our uh, fun and fancy sampler is called the seven inch. It's actually seven by six and a half, I think. And the reason that that's a good size for the quilt is there's a six inch, six and a half inch square, there's a four and a half inch square, and a three and a half inch square in the Fun and Fancy sampler. So for this actual book, if you purchase this pattern, then you'll be able to also purchase it as a bundle with the uh, seven inch square ruler, which is a little bit bigger, obviously, than this, but still very functional. So this is the four inch mini, and you can, you can have different options, different sizes, just like we all do. We all like different tools. So there's a couple of questions. I'm gonna let um, my helper relay some of those questions. So Ann asked if you could kind of clarify what's the relationship between the path to ruler work uh, and how does that book fit in with the film and fancy? Okay, so uh, let me show you. Let me see if I can pull it out. All right, here we go. Okay, Shh. look, really fast, right? These are the same quilts, right? So the pieces that are inside this book that show different ways to quilt it are in this book. This is a quilt pattern, how to piece the top, and this is a quilting pattern guide. And so they are working together so that you can make a quilt 
and then you could quilt it as well. And so I've got um, another video series in the works, or we may do it live, where we will actually be quilting the quilt together for those people that have an interest in doing that. And so these are just, just different layers, different layers. We trying to help people do what they wanna do and see the value of some of the amazing tools that Leone West has created. So I have already pieced my fun and uh, fancy swoon placemat. Let me show you. Oh, fell down. Alrighty. So what I thought we would do today is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to sew it. Because it's got some tricky things. It's got some uh, partial seaming and things like that. So I did a little pre-sewing right here. A little pre-pinning and everything else. But this is what we're making. This is what you're going to end up with. So now I will tell you that if you want this pattern, I am offering it free. Um, it's going to be posted in the file section of getting started with Sew Steady and Westerly Products, which is my ruler work support group on fabricated quilts. So the content of this pattern for how to piece it, it's free, but know that it is to be used with this video and to be used with the Westerly products. So if it says, you know, five inch finished, if you don't have the Westerly tools, you may have to do the math on your own because we are designing it to go with those tools. So it doesn't say cut, you know, whatever size, it says use that tool. Okay, so we're gonna move over to the sewing machine and we're gonna get started and we're gonna talk about chain piecing and I'm gonna show you how I'm using my grid glider and some of the other awesome Wesley products that we have. So if my iron is beeping at you, um, it's beeping at me too. All right, so give us just a second. We're gonna make sure that we have a good camera view for you before we get started. So, so you guys are like right in front of me. My eyes are behind. So if I'm off, we're just fudging. We're just gonna go with it. So real quick, I can show you right here. These are my triangles and I've already pinned them. And the reason that I pinned them is it's really important that these go on a certain side, right? So let me show you, if I have these two pieces, if I put these together a certain way, like this, this is a half square triangle unit with two pieces. This has the blue on the right side, right? But if I did it like this, see how the white is on the right side. So that is really important that you make sure that you're doing it in a way that you're gonna have the blue on the right side. Oh, this way. So that's why I went ahead and I pinned them so that I would make sure I knew which side was which over here. Okay, so honey, I think we're missing one of these pieces. It looks like maybe it fell down somewhere. It looks like that. Should be another one, one more. All right, so you can see they fit together perfectly. I kind of messed them up, sorry about that. <laughs> So my machine, it moves the needle over when I set it for the quarter inch sewing. So you can see that because I went ahead and I lined my quarter inch up and you'll notice that on the uh, bobbin cover, it says three eighths. So I just want you to ignore that and know that it's this is the quarter inch line that I'm going to be using. So don't worry. All right, so I wanna make sure that I have them on the same side, right? So I want, this side, so I'm, if this is the 45 degree, or this is the 90 degree angle, I'm gonna use the seam guide and I'm gonna sew down this side to make sure that all my pieces are on the right side. Okay, so let's go ahead. So I have a leader in here, and I just do that because I, I, I'm lazy, I guess is the bottom line, and then I'll just keep everybody on my quarter inch guide right there. Let's go ahead and we'll set a bunch of these in there. So having that leader, make sure that those first stitches that are on the piece are good and that 
none of the fabric gets pushed down or anything like that. So it's not awkward. I just really like that. So this would be chain piecing. So if I had, say I had a bunch of placemats, right? Say I want to do six of them. So this is four units for a single block. So then I would do four times six. I would do 24 of these half square units all at the same time. And I would piece all of them together at the same time. So can you see I can barely talk and sew at the same time? <laughs> All right, so what we'd have to do at this point is we'd have to get all of these pressed. Now, let's talk about pressing for just a second with these guys. So right there, you can see I can't release that guy because he's kind of stuck. But if I stick this in there and I just sew down that, that lets me cut this little guy off and just keep myself ready for sewing. There we go. All right, and we'll just open these up. So this is a placemat and, you know, we're going to have maybe a cup on it, a plate on it, some silverware, and the batting is really, really thin. So the batting doesn't cushion very much here because we don't want a really thick wobbly place for our plate. So for this particular um, project, I'm going to recommend that you go ahead and you press all of your seams open. Oh my God, did I sew them the wrong way? No, good. Oh, darn it. <laughs> you guys, I still do that just like everybody. I look at it and then all of a sudden it doesn't look like how it's supposed to be in my brain and I get crazy. So I'm going to press them real quick. I got my iron right with me and they're going to go together like this and that's your half square on this side and there's your quarter square on that side and we're going to put these together. So let me get them pressed up real fast. So what I'll do right now is while I'm pressing my, my irons right nearby, but I'll be answering questions. So if you have a question, can you go ahead and uh, post it right now? And my super helper husband is going to pass your question along. So here's that nice open seam like that. It's going to be nice and pretty. Any questions? Uh, they asked where could you get the thumb screws. I think that's the only thing they have. Uh, oh, okay. So I think I saw Betty. Um, Betty, and I think Carol asked about that as well. So the thumb screws are on the So Steady website. So those are real easy. You can just um, order those. What I can do is, if you're interested in those, I'll amend the post after our live, and I'll go ahead and I will uh, put a little part number in there for the thumb screws. So they are about $7 for a set. And I actually bought a bunch of them. I bought enough for all of my rulers, all of my adjustable rulers, because I don't want to be uh, worrying about if I need them or I don't need them. All right, so we're almost ready. I just got one more to press. Now let's talk about um, when you're pressing, since we have a little bit of bias, on, on these edges, right, on the short side of these guys. You wanna handle them gently, right? You don't wanna be uh, stretching them or creating any problems with them. Alrighty, so thanks for your patience. So we've got them all pressed, we're ready to go. So let me show you real quick how they line up so nice. So right here, I like to just line up the corner first and then I'll just go ahead and gently ease them into place. So this one, I, I was playing with them to see if I wanted to cut the corners off because that'll save you from having to dog ear it later. But uh, I decided that I liked it a little better this way. So now that being said, Westerly does have a pretty cool trim guide. So that's another tool that you could definitely use. So just feed it in there gently. And I like to go ahead and with my machine, it's got this little guide right here. So I like to make sure that I make sure this little tip right here goes down into the foot right there. I don't want him to get popped up. So yeah, he went right through my little corner there, which was nice. Same thing here. So you guys get to see me. Lots of people have seen me quilt, but not a lot of people have seen me piece. But I was a piecer for um, about 15 years before I decided that I wanted to be a long armor. 
and uh, really decided that I was going to get myself quilting capable because I had a, probably 20 or 30 quilts and I didn't have the ability to quilt them. So I wanted to make sure that I moved away from that. All right, so we got two more. And then I will, I'm going to share something else that I've done. I went ahead and I already have my half square units pieced. Um, those were the little ones, the little squares that had the red and white. I've already got those pinned. I think I want to sew with this side up so that I can manage this better. Because I've got that seam on the top there. And then I'll just kind of gently make sure that that's in place. All right, and so let me show you. I went ahead and I've got these already pinned. So that's the, the unit. So the red, the long side here on the red is going to go against the blue. And you can go ahead and get all of your pieces that are capable of being sewn together all at the same time. And then you can just go ahead and feed those all in. So we just made this one, we just cut this blue one for you as the demo. So this one's gonna go like that. And these pieces are pretty small. They don't really require that much pinning. So right here, this is pressed back. So I'm gonna go ahead and put him under there first like that. That will make sure that he stays the right way and everything else. If your little edges are not quite um, together, then after you take the first couple of stitches, just tidy these up and then hold them in place. And that's a way you can sort of ease your fabric and get them right in there. So Lillian, you're asking about my thread weight. Right now I'm piecing with a 50 weight thread. Um, I'm using Masterpiece, but I also use Wonderfill, um, anything that's lightweight. So Masterpiece is a two ply, not a three ply thread. And that makes it much thinner and flatter. So it's great to use for piecing in that regard. And then Wonderfill has 80 weight deco bob, which is sort of cottonized. So it's not quite as slick as maybe Invisifil or something like that. And you can go ahead and piece with um, that 80 weight deco bob and that's a very fine thread. So that'll make a really nice fine seam. And that way when you are pressing, you don't have a big lumpy, bumpy area. So here's our last one. So can you tell my son just came home? So we have this uh, um, bell on the door that we bought in Korea, which is like a chime almost. And my kids hate it. They used to take it off of the door and set it on the table so that mom and dad wouldn't know if they came in or out. And of course, now that they're mostly, you know, not too worried about mom and dad knowing what they're doing, it's always on. Alrighty, so let me show you real quick. Let's get our little taggy. Did you see Carol's question? I didn't. Carol, Carol, what's her question? So I'm trying to sew an accurate quarter inch. So I, I know there's a lot of controversy about that. So I don't really worry about that in the sense that I've sewed such a long time that I know what my visual seam allowance is, right? So, you know, is that a scan? I don't know, I don't measure it. <laughs> I just know that all the pieces fit together later. And because I'm using the guide for my machine, it keeps me pretty consistent. So I don't usually have a problem. Um, so let me open this up. All right, and so we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna press this open and that's gonna help really relieve bulk there. So one of the things that you can do when you're doing that is you can just open it with your finger and then just run your finger down the seam like that, especially if you have like your fingernail. You don't wanna pull too hard. You just wanna kinda of give it a little press and then that'll make it easier when you take it over to the iron because then it'll behave. This one, same thing too, we, we wanna open these up too. And all of the open seaming is in the interest of making sure that things aren't too bulky. 
because we don't want our cup, you know, sitting right on a little seam knot and tipping over, right? So there you go. So my little helper is going to help me. And the way that these are going to go, this is our center square. And he's going to end up sewing in. And the white unit is going to go towards the middle because this is the middle. So this white triangle is going to orient towards the middle like that. Okay, and then this person, this little piece on here is gonna go on the end. Oh, I have it wrong. Oh, I need my picture. Yeah, that's good, yeah, perfect. Yeah, we'll sew it, we'll set it up this way. Visually challenged. Okay, so there you go. So here's our center square and the white comes in and then this unit is gonna come off of the side. Right, so we'll set that up for you. Like that. And then this guy. So the blue is our corner unit like that. So we wanna sew all of these units together first. So we're gonna just start piecing these as we go. So my uh, super awesome production manager is, is being a quilter right now too, you guys. It's so cool. <laughs> He's helping me because he doesn't want you guys to have to wait. Isn't I'm not laughing at him. I'm thrilled and excited. <laughs> so my husband is a, a longtime veteran. He served 28 years in the military, and I was also a lieutenant. And his big joke is, as much as I iron, I never iron his clothes or iron for him. <laughs> so, so if you have a foot like mine right here with this metal bar, this one doesn't really have a curve, so this little tag can't go under there very conveniently. So usually when I get to this part, I will usually kind of pull this up, make sure the fabric here is underneath the foot, and then just continue with the seam allowance. So once you get one of these done, I wanna show you, because it's so easy, I think, to put one of these on backwards, I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this one off that I know is correct, and I'm just gonna set it in place like this as a reference to make sure that I do all the other ones correctly. So, so let's get our next one set up. So they all should be identical. So this one will go the exact same way. And then this one will go the same way. So we'll line these up. Now this is, now that we're starting to get bigger pieces, I'm really gonna show you this easing concept here. So when I put this in, I've lined this corner up very well. So these are perfectly matched up. And I'm gonna feed them right underneath there to get maybe two or three stitches. So the needle's actually in the fabric. Now, if you can see maybe right here, this is just slightly longer. So I'm just gonna manipulate just a little bit to get this corner right where he needs to be. And now as I sew, I can just automatically ease that fabric all the way along and make sure that my pieces fit well together. Right, so now those should be perfectly set up. Um, when you, can you do this one next, honey? Thanks. All right, so let's see. Let's see if we've got some questions since, uh, oh, he is, he's so great. Honestly, I mean, that's, he works all week and then he helps me all weekend. He's pretty amazing, I love my husband. Uh, let's see, question, question. So um, one of the things that I thought I would do is I just, um, I won't quilt this whole thing, but I am gonna share some of the quilting with it. I've already got it set up and it's already batted and everything else. And I will have to change over to my ruler foot, but I'm gonna demonstrate the ditch stitching again because I had uh, several people ask me about that. And I wanted to, to talk about that and also share some of the pressing for um, the strips on the ends and how I use the piecing to actually accentuate the quilt. So I'll be sharing that with you as well. And then um, I'm gonna just do maybe one or two of the designs from the Fun and Fancy collection and show some different ways that you can use that. Yeah, that's perfect, baby, thanks. And then here, if you can do this one as well, thanks. That's the last one. All right, so let's get these last two pieces set up. Oh, that one has, I stitched him in. Can you see that? Oh, well, shh. We'll just press him and just go with it. Don't tell anybody. 
If I really felt the need to uh, fix that, I could always just stitch that down and fix it later, but I'm not going to, it's not worth it. All right, so we've got him lined up right at the top there, and we'll do that same thing that we just talked about, make sure that he's under there nicely. Take a few stitches, and then you can see right there, see how he's got a little white peeking out? Well, we can just hold that nice, and we don't want to strain it too much, but that's, generally speaking, that's a good way to kind of ease that in there. And that helps limit your pinning requirements. Can you see that my, my fabric right there is bunching up? Let's use a little pin to make him lay down right there. There we go. Okay, good. So we should be perfect there. So honey, can you start pressing these again? So this one right here, that'll need to be pressed open as well. Thanks, babe. Alrighty, and we'll do this last one. Let's make sure we have them all the same. Oh, I'm wandering around here. So next time I think I'll pre-sew a little bit more so you guys are not just hanging out waiting, right? Let's see. I've got to use my sample again. Make sure everybody is the same. All right, so we'll get them all lined up. My iron always talks to me. It's constantly beeping. All right, so let's get that last one done. And then while he's pressing, I'll be able to start sewing the piecing part of it that's tricky. Yeah, I'll give you this one in just a second. So I don't know if you can see this was sticking out a little bit, so I just grabbed this part right there just to make sure that he would be tucked in. And just make sure we can get that last little part. All right. So I'm gonna give these to Honey and he's gonna finish, and he is gonna press them open. So you're gonna see they're gonna be like that, right? And they get a little busy, but it's, it still works out. It's gonna look great when we're all done, so. This is one he's already done. And I'm gonna release this last little piece right here so he can, so he can have that one as well and press that. So now we are ready to do the tricky part. So let me make sure that I've got everybody lined up just so. This piece doesn't look like he fits, does he? You're like, what are you doing? But this is a partial seaming method that allows you to put together things that you might think you couldn't put together. So in order to have this corner clean, I'm gonna go ahead and just trim these off real fast, get these little guys out of my way. Because I, I do wanna lay them corner to corner pretty precisely. So just flip this over, line everybody up. Okay. And just as we did before, I'm gonna go ahead and just take a few stitches right here and I'm gonna sew not even half, but about to right here. And because I don't want this to come undone, I'm gonna go ahead and just tack stitch it really quickly. And that'll just prevent it because there's gonna be a little tug on it. So that way we can make sure that it's nice and secure and it won't be having a problem. So let's stick that in there. Okay, so obviously he's not, uh, you know, all the way connected, he's just connected at the top. So because we are doing open seams, let's just go ahead and press that, make sure that he's open. Now, this size right here is the perfect size for me to put this next one on. Right, so the white is gonna come towards the center and here's the boundary, and this is the corner block. So that's how you can orient, make sure that you're set up properly. So this is the same thing. We'll just take these little guys off. So that little easing method that we just showed you a minute ago, you can see how that's gonna start to become more and more important. So let's go ahead and line this up, and I'm gonna let the needle hold that as we go. So that'll, the initial placement 
It's just gonna be the needle right there holding that. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and get these other corners lined up right here. And the longer that it is, like if this was, this is probably doable without pinning, but if you had wonky seams or if you just feel like, you know, it's hard to hold things together, then it might be worth putting an extra pin. So you can see right here, this one is finger pressed, so he's not really laying flat. So let's go ahead and put a little pin on the side that'll reach the foot first. And that'll help keep him flat so he doesn't get flipped over when we stitch. Up on top here, I can manage this part pretty well. So I'm just gonna check and make sure all these are nicely aligned and right there, let me show you real quick, right where this little white is, I'm gonna try to stitch right at the very apex of this little white triangle as I go through the foot. And what that is, is that's the point. That's the point that you're protecting when we open up that other, oh darn it, here we go. I didn't do a good job managing that, right? Okay, so I'm looking inside the foot right there, trying to get my, my tip of my triangle perfect. And then right here, I wanna make sure that when he goes through there, that that seam is flat. So I'm gonna kind of feel for it with my finger. And this has that same little tag, so let's see if we can trim him. There we go. I think he'll fit in better that way if we do it. All right, so this is where we really want that little scrap because we wanna keep our thread going. So we'll just feed him back in there, cut this off. Now, in the directions, you can see that you know there's different steps. So like putting this one on to this, the center square with the partial, that's one step. And then when you're adding these, these are the step five units in the handout that I have, and you're gonna add all of them, right? So now you can already see that we've added him perfectly and he, he's right lined up at that edge right there. So let's go ahead and we'll just finger press the seam open again. So all of these are gonna be open eventually, but this will just help us get this seam going. Okay, so let's line them up. Remember that this is the corner block, right? So no blues are touching. And then the white is parallel with this triangle right here. So same thing, we'll get these guys in there. We'll trim off these little dog ears. So obviously if you have all, you know, six place mats, how just sit there and trim all the dog ears off all at the same time, but. Let's get everybody lined up nice and neat. And we'll get him right under there and let the needle be our pin right at the tip. Okay, so that's holding everybody accurately in place. And now we can check all of these guys right here. So put this guy together first, put this corner. And I think he's worth having a pin. We can hold him later, but we wanna make sure that we're easing all these other seams in nice. So right here, we wanna make sure that this one's open. So we'll pin on the side that will hit the foot first to make sure that that little lip of fabric right there is gonna stay connected right here and not flip over. And here, as we go through, I'm just gonna manage this little guy right here and make sure that we're easing him nicely. Maybe a pin will help. I am, so only the very first one is a partial seam. Notice that size-wise, this is perfectly matched. There's no reason to do a partial because this is accurate. Here, we don't have this piece on yet, so we can't sew all the way down because this piece doesn't have what it needs. So what we're doing is we just sewed a partial in order to get the first piece to fit. Then we sewed that whole first piece on there. This one is sewn all the way. Now we'll sew this one all the way, and then we're gonna add this one. Once this last one is added, then the rest of this piece right here will be present, and we'll finish this last seam. So this is called partial seaming, and it's just a, it's a really creative way to be able to put blocks together that seem like they would just not be able to put, be put together. So it's just really a nice, efficient way of doing things. 
So let's make sure we can see where we're going here. There we go. I just don't want him to get flapped up right there at the end. All right, let's put our little leader in. All right, let's see if we can cut that last bit. All right, so this is how we're going. So you can see everything's laying nice. We've got some nice points right there, right there. This was where we, you know, cross the white triangle on the back. You can see it looks really good. And you can see he fits right there. So we'll just trim that, that little dog ear right there. Get those out of our way. And we're ready to put the last piece on. So we wanna make sure that we have our blue corner. And let's trim these right here before we start. We'll just go ahead and trim that. All right, so we'll get him lined up. I hope you're not bored. I hope this is fun and interesting. Let's clip this little guy too. He's gonna be trouble. I don't like have anybody sticking out where my foot is. All right, here we go. We'll get those first couple stitches. That's my anchor right there. And then we'll make sure that this corner is properly pinned. The reason that I want to make sure this corner is properly pinned is because that's going to create a straight seam that the rest of this is going to connect to right here. This part has to connect to this little edge right there. So I want to make sure that this is perfectly matched so we have a nice straight connection right there. So then we'll just get everybody in their place. We'll get this seam pinned right here so that it's open and that it will lay flat until it's under the foot. And then I'll just manage this part on the top. All right, here we go. So I'm looking through right there. This isn't a clear foot, but I wanna make sure I get right through that little white triangle. And then I'll make sure that I'm matching up right here. And then this is where the seam is. So we'll kind of get him under the foot and then I can take this off. And I'm actually, I'm gonna just move that out of the way because I wanna be able to sew right off the end. So we'll get him under there. That'll help hold him so that the foot has everybody controlled for that last bit of the stitch. All right. All right, we're about ready for the magic. Almost ready. This will be the last seam to get these guys all in place. So let's cut that off. Okay, let's show you what we got so far. So this one is the partial right there. And then this is the last piece. And you can see right there now we're almost there. So let's go ahead and press this part open. So I'll just use my fingernail and get that. And I, I would come back in and I would open all of these seams. And I would, you know, put some steam on everything and press it really well. But just for now, we just need this part right here open. Okay, now we'll put these two together. Right here, I wanna make sure that I have a pin because I wanna make sure that just a little bit back beyond here, I'm keeping everybody from rolling because this wants to open up right here. So I don't want that. I wanna make sure that when I put the foot down that there's a little bit of room in front of the pin for the seam to be flat so that it can stitch. So we're gonna put the needle in about right there. Then we'll get these guys all lined up. So why are we sharing this today? I wanted to just share how powerful these Westerly tools are. And because I have you know, the fun and fancy sampler as something that we're selling and, and it's a proprietary pattern, I wanted to still be able to share with you how amazing they are, how powerful they are, without that content you know, being out already. So I hope that you're enjoying it. I hope you find this fun. This is kind of a nod for our 4th of July. And of course you can do it in any color way that you want. You can change it up however you like. 
Okay, so we're tagged in right there. I'll get that pin out and just make sure that everybody's in their place. Okay. Could you start sewing at the other end? Um, I could, but it's pretty flat right here and it starts to get bulky. And I wanna make sure that this corner on this side is exact. I don't want it to sew that way and maybe push fabric that way. I wanna enforce that that seam back here matches exactly. And here, this can't really go anywhere because it's already stitched in. So I think that my, my thoughts are is I think it works much better this way. So let me see where my little triangle is. I'm gonna just hedge my bet right here because my triangle is a little bit narrower than I thought. So I'm just gonna correct him. Okay, and there's my seam right under there where the pin is. So we'll take that out. Now let's see if I can show you where, where I need to stop so that you guys can have a little visual. Right there is the tie off seam. So that'll help you see what I'm trying to get. So see how this is rolling? So that's why I have that pin there. I wanna make sure that I don't end up, you know, stitching into that rolled area. So I'm right at the dot, perfect. And then I'll do one stitch over and then let's back stitch it for security. Okay. So let me cut that off. There you go. And you can see it's pretty flat. I mean, there's not any like weirdness there. And you can see right here, the corners are pretty nice. That one's perfect too. So we'll be able to make a beautiful block. And the way that the quilt is made is this is 12 and a half inch finish. It's actually 13 because it um, has the seam allowance factored in. So you're gonna put a 13 inch strip and I use a narrow blue. Can you grab that, honey? Um, that one, right there. Well, I'm gonna pull up the one that's ready to be quilted so I can show you the whole thing. Let me get these pins out of here. Okay, so we finished the block and now you can do it at home if you want to. So the uh, pattern doesn't have the quilting in it, it's just the construction pattern and you can use it with this video. So this right here is a one inch cut and that's a half inch then sewn in. And then right here on this side, matching. And then there's just a little red accent and I made it, it's one inch. So if you wanted to put something decorative in there, then you can. It's the idea is that you could put some quilting in there. And then I guess it goes like this. This is your silverware area over here. Kind of narrow, but it could be both of these, you know, whatever. And then because this is a half inch, I think it would be nice to put a half inch binding on there because it'll echo this element. So let's talk about some of the quilting things that we wanna talk about. So I am gonna to have to change my thread, so hopefully you guys will be patient with me there, but let's talk about it. Right now, this is just spray basted, right? It's sticky. And I'm gonna ditch right here. So if you look, the seam is pressed this way and this way, which means that in the red, the valley is on both sides. So I will get a symmetrical ditching look on both of these sides right here. Right here, this is very narrow. I mean, it's, it's a half inch, but if you look, this is a seam allowance right there. Look at that. See, they overlap. Well, what I did is I did that intentionally on both sides because now there's a little extra fill right underneath this area. So if I ditch right here and I ditch right here, this area is gonna have a little lift right there, a little extra texture. So he'll be raised up and we don't have a lot of batting in there. So having just that little bit of extra fabric there is going to give you a little bit of more three-dimensional lift on there. So let's go ahead and we'll set our machine up for ruler work real quick. So easy to do with this machine, which I love. I actually have it saved as a favorite setting and we're just gonna use the same uh, bobbin. So we're not going to change the bobbin. We're just going to change our top thread to a blue thread. Were there any questions, baby? Uh, a couple people can't find the table topper. They bought the set. 
Yeah, you guys, let me address that. So thank you so much for asking that question. I think that's important that we go ahead and we um, put that out. So what I was originally going to do was to use the Facebook Live content for that and put it on there. After I viewed it, I felt like it wasn't as effective to give you the content in a nice clear way because you know I'm talking to people and there's disruptions and you're answering questions and that kind of thing. So what I did, can you feed it through there baby? That's what I need, I need it through that hole. Um, so what I did is I went ahead and I made the whole video sequence as a separate item. And the reason that's not loaded yet is it is done but it's just that um, we had to compress the video. No, just, just, that's good. Thank you. So it's it's being loaded as we speak and it will be live tomorrow, I have been promised. And so if you don't mind being patient, that would be just so great and I apologize for any inconvenience. But I hope that the content being better and being cleaner will make up for that for you and that you will be happy with what you get. So in addition, I wanna say that we have um, some of the free motion fills that I, I did. And what I'm setting up is that that will be bonus content added to that and it's not currently there. You know, it's, um, that is something that I need a specific thread to do and unfortunately with COVID-19, it hasn't come. It's supposed to come next week. So I'll be adding that content as soon as it's ready. So let's go ahead and um, get ourselves set up with our ruler settings. All right, so on mine, this fabric is really, really thin. So I need my foot to be, you know, closer down here. It's gonna, it's not gonna be up really high. I did not pick up a bobbin thread though. So let's try one more time. We'll just do it out here in the batting to get that going. Nope, it's too short. There we go. Okay, one more try. <laughs> there we go, that should pick it up. All right, so because I'm on the edge right here, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and just start in the edge and that'll help me get myself um, closer up in as I sew. So I'm just gonna hold the fabric down right here and kind of just really gently get right into the very edge right here so that I'm right along this edge right here. And when I ditch, I absolutely love to use my 12 inch arc. So let me see if I can grab it, it's hiding. Oh, did you guys see this? Look at that. So I was very, very fortunate to be a top 10 promoted instructor last year. And So Steady gave me this pretty awesome ruler rack as a thank you. And I love sharing with you guys. I love being part of the Wesley team and the So Steady team and sharing all these amazing tools with you. So if you have lots of rulers that you can't keep track of like me, you definitely want a ruler rack. All right, so there's my 12 inch arc that was hiding. So honey, can you do me a favor? Can we move that so I can put the rack there? Because we're done with that, thank you dear. All righty, and let me get my spacing gauge. All right, I have two of them. <laughs> so if you don't have an awesome lanyard like mine, which we have 10 different colors, this is from uh, Sarah Diddy. It's the Notions necklace, which I love, but you can also use a piece of ribbon, something to make sure that you can find this. So he gets lost, he gets put under a quilt, he's constantly walking away. So this is our ditch right here, and you can see there's a lip right there where the blue is raised up. So I would go ahead and do it on this side, and you're gonna set your let me see, make sure I'm in my ditch. There we go, that's a little better. All right, so right there, if you're looking, this edge right here should be flat. So for example, if my ruler was like that, that is not a quarter inch. Okay, that is narrower. That right there is a quarter inch. So the very outside edge right here is where you want the needle to go. And I want my needle to go right in that ditch if I wanted it to, to go on the other side, I could, you know, I could short it like that. That would make it sew on the blue, but I don't want to sew on the blue. I want to be tucked in tight to that red seam. So now I can go ahead and start, and I'm looking inside the foot. 
making sure that I'm nice and close. And I can always stop if, you know, if, if it's going wonky. Don't just keep sewing. Just adjust it right away. Right? And then I'm going to show you my little safety tip as well as we go. All right. Say I'm coming down here, right? There's my finger. Okay. I believe in a two finger rule right there. Two fingers. What happens is I have seen in class is people will go like this and they're like, oh, ah, I call that falling off the cliff, right? Don't, don't put yourself in that jeopardy. In addition, if I'm holding right here and I sew past my finger, there's no support over here. So now as you're pushing in, you, you get that like pivot thing. So keep your hands spaced wide. That gives you the best pressure, pushing in towards the foot, nice and even. And when you get to your fingers, then that's where you wanna stop so that you're not gonna outstrip the safe pressure that you have as you're holding on to the template. If I see right now, see how that's getting wider? So that some, maybe my seam is off or whatever. Don't just keep sewing. You have a calibrated quarter inch eyeball if you've sewn any length of time and your brain knows that that's probably the incorrect seam allowance. Go ahead and just correct it right away. If you see it happening, just let your body respond to it visually and then you'll be much more successful and you'll have a nice pretty ditch. Okay, so let's show you ditch really quick. We'll flip this around. So what do you think? Does that look okay? So it's, it's not hidden. I mean, this is a decorative color. If I want it to be hidden, I would put a red thread in there. But I'm a little bit lazy, so I'm not going to. So I would ditch the straight lines here. I would ditch this as well. I would ditch this. And then I would sew within the block. So we've um, taken a lot of time today, but I want to show you just at least one quilting design. So this was my ditching tip for you. And then I want to show you some different Yes, let me um, have the one that's already quilted, baby. And then we'll see the back, too. You know, oh, darn it, it's a busy back. Sorry. I don't think you're going to be able to see anything on the back there. You want to see the ditching. It's the same fabric. I don't think it will show you. But you can see it's just a straight, just a straight line, right? I do usually use plain backs because I want the quilting to show. But I didn't because with the placemat, it's going to get dirty. And I just want it to be hidden if it gets dirty or spaghetti sauce on it or whatever. So this right here, let me scoot this down just a little. This shape right here, this is the Circles on Quilts spinning wheel number 21. And let's see if I can, we'll just kind of grab that for you. So this one, of course, is already sewn. I use this as the pin more center right there. And I sewed from the red out and back. And then here, as you go up, I moved it. I had some reference lines. And this space right here was one inch. And here's how I measured it. As I moved it over, it was one inch at the template. So like right here, if that plastic was there, that's how much I moved it. So I pushed this up as far as it could go. And that was how much I lined up the next one. And then when I did the next one, same thing. That's one inch from the previous plastic opening. I pushed this up in there and that's how I spaced it. And these are all double stitched and then travel up here. So you're stitching out and back and then traveling up, out and back. And then I made lines from the point and from the intersection right here. I had chalk lines like this. And then I did another set like this. So this is sewing in and then up and back and up and back. And they were lined up on the reference lines that were created after I stitched that first piece. So it's just an innovative way. It kind of looks like a, like a feather, like a wing almost. And that was just a fun way to use that. We have the circle that's part of the Fun and Fancy collection. It's a one inch circle, and this is a, about two and a half inch finished, this interior space. So the little one inch spirograph fits perfectly in there. And then this is the oval, and you can see he makes a perfect little uh, arcs in here to fit. And then for the larger arcs right here, this is the 12 inch arc. 
So it's not quite the same, but it does have a similar echo and it, it has no crossover here, which was really nice because it, then it had that same kind of look. And then I went ahead and did the double arcs here and I didn't try to, to go in the middle because that'll make this little bi-level puff up a little bit. And you can see that, you know, here as well. So these are going to be the same between those two. So that's just one, one way to quilt it. And then I'll just show you one more idea. So this space right here, if I use the center, I wanted to show you how the spin effects can fit in there so nicely. So right away, you can just set him on there like that. And you can say, oh yeah, he's going to fit perfectly. You know, he's going to quilt a lot of that space, if not all of it and we can go ahead and line him up. And even over here, if I did it on this side, I can use this, I don't even have to mark anything, which is great, because I hate marking. I do it, I do it when it's needed, but I, I love not having to do it. So let's go ahead, we'll bring up our thread on the bottom. Oh, darn it, it's so skippy. All right, so then we'll put that in. And what I would do with this one is I would do that on all four of these block spaces. And then once I put that in, I would use that as kind of the main design for this particular block. So the goal for me would be to quilt each placemat differently, not all of them the same. So, all right, so let's talk a little bit about hand placement. So this template is great. It's got um, some really easy markings. And of course, we don't have to, you know, put a crosshair for it because we have all the seam lines. So you're going to line it up right here. And, and I would sew the whole thing. I love that you're going to get kind of a two-tone impact on each of these sides. So our thread is kind of a lightish blue. And it seemed like it worked pretty well. It matches the teal that's on here. And then we'll stop right at the intersection and then I can just go around and we'll do that with each one. So with this template, notice that I've got four of the stable tape and it's kind of like a circle. I mean, you're traveling 360. So as I come along this side, I'm pushing the template this way forward, sort of at an angle this way. By the time I'm here at this curve, I'm pushing the template that way. Right? And then by the time I get to the apex here, I need to push this way so that the ruler foot is having this push forward. So anytime you have a template that kind of has a 360 motion, I think a minimum of these stable tapes is four. And notice that I'm not holding it way out here, that I like to be in control where the edge of the plastic is touching the foot. So you'll see that my stable tapes are pretty close inside towards the edge of the template. So here I gotta be a little careful because this bar right here, I gotta keep my hands away from him. Right, there we go. And we'll just put one more in for this navy because I think that'll, it'll look fun. So here I just am using this straight line and that should get me perfectly lined up. And in I should be able to pretty much line up right here as well. So, so let's talk to you about free motion. So one of the tips that I like to give any of my ruler work students, I think it's really important that you listen to your machine when you're sewing. So if I were to just like press the gas super hard and sew, and the machine sounded like a freight train, right? Then that generates a ton of anxiety. It's okay to sew slowly. Just move steadily along and try to sound like your machine does when it's piecing. And that would be a really great way for you to help control your stitches because you know what your stitch movement needs to be like. If you've pieced for any length of time, your body knows how fast your fabric moves when you're comfortable, and then you're also relaxed as well. So let's go ahead, we'll pull this off. Oh, I love it. I think it's gonna look great on this. So we'll tack it off, and I'll use my cutter. That means I have to go back and trim the little tails. 
Anytime that you use a button for cutting, you end up with those little guys like that. So if you don't wanna do that, then you can bring your bobbin thread up to the top and do it that way. But doesn't that look great? I think that's gonna look so cool. If I felt a need to have more quilting in this, I can ditch this and then I can even do a quarter inch echo in here. And I think that would kind of frame this out a little more and give a little more definition instead of just having this bleed to the end, then you'd have a little bit of a border right there. Probably will do, um, I'll show you how I use the oval because this is, this is the same size as these other squares and the oval will fit perfectly here and then you can also ditch around it. So let's see, we gotta get our little tail up first, otherwise we'll be in trouble. So if you need some help, you can just hold this top thread and you could sweep that under there and hopefully that'll bring him up. Oh, he's very ornery today. Ugh, oh, my glider's so sticky, I can't get him. There we go. All right, so we'll do this last one. This will be the last quilting design that we'll share. So if you have any questions or concerns, let's go ahead and um, ask them now. I'll try to get those answered for you, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and set my needle here and we are gonna sew back to that area. Plus we can also travel from there when we're done. So if I wanna go use this from corner to corner, he'll make a perfect little arc I don't need the, the uh, key to be able to move around and take him on and off if I want to. I know that he has to touch, so I would scoot him down until I have an appropriate quarter inch on this side. And that, that's where your spacing gauge could be really useful. So. so now as he sews, I know he should be able to hit that corner exactly. Okay, and then just to keep you in a nice view, right, same thing, you're just gonna lower this down until you have the quarter inch right here. And this is where our open seaming is really gonna be helpful because that's gonna help make sure that we don't have a big bulkiness. There is a little bulk right there that you'll have to deal with, but if we didn't press it open, it would be a lot worse, I know that. Okay, so I'm right in the little corner. So here you can see, doesn't that look awesome? Love it. All right, so we'll do one more. Same thing, use that spacing gauge. And make sure that the flush edge right here is flush. It's not like this, it's not like, oh, he's touching. The two flush edges have to be together to accurately measure that quarter inch. Make sure you're touching the foot and you'll be ready to move. Okay, and let's do one more. Same thing, oh, I love my spacing gauge. Can you tell? Perfect. So, here we'll be able to close that design. We're right back to where we started. I'll just pull this off. And now I can, I can ditch, I can travel, and use my 12 inch arc here. I can get somehow to the middle. We don't want anything in this. We could travel here, but this is where we're gonna put our matching designs. So if we needed to travel over here to do this side, to ditch, whatever, we could do that. I would plan the path. I would think about like, how can I get the most out of a single continuous line of travel? And remember then if you're over here, you know, these can be continuous here, this way, and then you exit over here, like on the little corner. I can do all of these things and I can do the corner because this is the edge right here. <coughs> oh, excuse me, so sorry. <laughs> anyway, and let me, I'll give you one more tip, but I won't sew anymore. So, you know, we have, as part of our fun and fancy collection, we have the back-to-back -back template. Well, this is a fairly shallow arc if we wanted to put another bit in there, 
like that, see how this will create another swag just by using that. And it's not that it has to fill this, it just has to be a quarter inch away, but because it's deeper, you could get a double swag in there for the center. And I think that would look amazing right there. So I'm just gonna leave it there. I so much appreciate you guys being here. I love sharing this time with you. COVID-19 is, is lonely and I love being able to talk to you guys and share our passion for sewing. Um, I will be watching tomorrow to make sure that we get the table topper done and I hope that it will be worth the wait for those people that are waiting and I do apologize for that but I hope it'll be great content for you. And then if there's any other questions, I'm Kate at fabricatedquilts.com. That's my email. You're welcome to send me an, uh, an email or ask me a question. And I'm Fabricated Quilts on Facebook. And I also have a ruler work support group there. So the PDF pattern for this swoon placement is going to be in the file section of my ruler work support group. And as soon as we're done with this live, I will go ahead and I will post a link to that group. It, it does request that you answer some questions just to make sure that you're an actual sewer. I really am not trying to, to uh, vet you too hard, but you know, I have some people that are just soliciting randomly, you know, so I, I want you to be a sewer so you can contribute to our group. So thank you so much for your time, you guys. Happy quilting and have a wonderful Sunday evening. I'll see you next week.